Right. Boom. It just literally sits on a shelf. Yeah. Sits with the other group of water bottles. Uh huh. Doesn't do anything, but it is fulfilling its purpose. Right. 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 It is functioning while it's sitting there. Amen. Now I want you to imagine for a moment that if the water bottle looked over at the fork, mm. we're on the dinner table, the water bottle said, I tell you what, that fork just gets to go everywhere. Mm. It goes in the drawer, it goes in the dishwasher, mm -hmm. it goes all around people's hands, gets to see the inside of people's mouth, and it gets to go and see the most finest delicacy of food. And when people get, rid get done with me, they just throw me in the trash. Mm -hmm. Now, the water bottle could be pretty uptight over that well, because, wow, if I could just be the fork. Mm. And so the water bottle begins to say, well, let me try to function like the fork. Can you imagine sitting at a dinner table? Because today we're going to go out and eat somewhere. Or maybe you're going to have a meal or something. Somebody's going to eat. At least I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat something <laughs> myself. I'm going to eat today. I'm going to tell you that right now. But I can tell you when I do go to eat, I'm not going to sit at the table and I'm going to take my water bottle and just start trying to dig into some food. Right. Welcome to Kingdom Life Ministries International of Elizabethtown, Kentucky, headed by senior pastors Dr. Ray and Lillian Romero. We are pleased to present our weekly Sunday service, and today our guest pastor is none other than Pastor Chris Harris. On this Father's Day, Pastor Harris deals with the topic, The Father in You. So without further delay, Let's proceed to our service already in progress. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. I know y'all can do better than that. Hallelujah. The Lord he has been good to you. Amen. He's been good to me. I know that. So praise God, praise God. So let's do that again. Let's give God another shout of praise today. Hallelujah. day, this opportunity to be here. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, thank y'all for joining in with us today. Uh, I'm Dr. Ray Romero with Kingdom Life Ministries International here in Elizabethtown, and we're so excited that you have chosen to be with us today uh, on this great day to celebrate the Lord uh, and the great things that he has done and the great things that he's going to do. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God for that. We thank God for those of y'all that are here with us live and, uh, and those of y'all that are uh, streaming uh, Facebook Live with us as well. So yes. praise God. God has been good to us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I just want to uh, wish everybody, all the fathers out there, a happy Father's Day. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God. Uh, has really chosen you. Amen? Yes. You have been chosen by God uh, to uh, populate uh, and reproduce here on the earth. Amen? Amen? And glory to God. Some of us are doing it better than uh, than some of the uh, other ones. Amen? <laughs> glory to God. So, hey, we thank God for that. Amen? So, praise God as we celebrate uh, Father's Day today. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you um, that God has chosen. Uh, this is also uh, the weekend, or tomorrow will be the day that we celebrate Juneteenth. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. The emancipation of, and freedom of, of enslaved um, African American people. And we thank God yes. um, for that. Amen. We thank Amen. God uh, for freedom. But also, along with that, we thank God for the liberty and freedom that Jesus paid on the cross for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, uh, so we kind of have a, a, a triple threat going here. Amen? Amen. Celebrating Father, celebrating G, uh, Juneteenth, and then also celebrating our liberation. Amen? Amen. Liberation from what? Liberation from darkness. Amen. Liberation Amen. from sin. Amen? liberation from bondages and uh just liberation that gives us freedom amen yeah. glory to god and along yeah. with that uh through jesus christ and preaching of the gospel also gave women the freedom too 
uh, to actually begin to minister the word as well. Hallelujah. So we got a lot of things to be thankful for today. Amen. Amen. So glory to God. As we just go ahead and jump into our service this morning, uh, we have with us today uh, one of our sons uh, in the Lord. Uh, uh, Pastor Chris Harris, who's going to be ministering to us today, and we thank God for that. Um, but before we get to that message, glory to God, we're going to have a couple of our leaders come, and they're going to open up uh, in a word of encouragement and a word of blessing to us and to the fathers today. Um, I do want to just uh, let everybody know that it had been um, a real... Um, um, explosive weekend. Yes. Uh, Pastor DeLillian marched with Sisters for Life yesterday as they went on their 19th, yes. uh, what is it? 15th the March. 15th uh, Father's Day March. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sisters for Life has been fighting the good fight of faith for 19 years. And the abortion mill in Louisville, Kentucky, and probably the only one in the state of Kentucky has now been shut down, amen, amen wow. and is no longer in business anymore, amen. amen. And so again, we're talking about another portion of, of liberation, amen. 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 amen, another portion of bondage that uh, had been taking place for years and years and years of of uh, the, the killing of these unborn babies. So we thank God for that, amen. We thank God for... Uh, that portion there. Uh, also, I just want to share yesterday, um, we met with them there, we greeted everybody, but then Nathan and I had to go to Blackburn Correctional Facility uh, to minister to the inmates there, and, uh, and that was another uh, a great time there. Uh, I don't know exactly how many we had in attendance, but the chapel seemed to be pretty full Amen. as well. Uh, and then uh, also with that, uh, Nathan was with me, my number three son, and he also uh, ministered the word yesterday. Hallelujah. And so, again, uh, just another form of liberation. Amen. Amen. Because you can have somebody young minister to these young ones that were in there, as, as well as the older ones, um, and let them know that. Uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ is going to be preached everywhere. Amen. 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 And so we thank God for that. So we thank God for just a, a power-packed weekend. Uh, we'll be with you all this morning. Uh, shortly after the service, uh, we'll be running to uh, Bishop Larry Coleman's church. I say running, but we're going to be driving to Bishop Larry <laughs> Coleman's church, uh, where he is actually doing a Juneteenth. Uh, celebration there at his location uh, and we'll be going over there to minister a word with them as well and to help do whatever else needs to be done so uh, this has been uh, just a, an ongoing weekend but we thank God for it Amen. 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 thank God for being busy about the work of the Lord glory to God Amen. Amen. and so all of y'all here we thank y'all just continue to pray for us and we're gonna believe God Amen so as I turn this over, I'm going to have Pastor Delilly come up. She's going to share a greeting with everybody. Bishop will come up, and he's going to minister the word. Uh, well, he's going to give us a greeting uh, from the word of God. So, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. 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 Glory to God. It's a great day today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It is a wonderful and, and just a glorious day today. It's always good to be here. We have one of our sons in the ministry, yes. Pastor uh Chris Harris is going to share the word today. Yes. Uh, yeah, hold on because he yes. can be loud and really powerful. Oh, wow. We're excited yes. about that. That is why Pastor Ray, question, Dr. Yes, Ray uh, opened us up is Bring because it. he wow. has someone else that's going to share the word Thank today. God. So we're honored to be here yes. today. My name is, uh, welcome to Kingdom Life Ministries International in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And as Pastor Ray just uh, let you know that I marched yesterday. Now I'm a bike rider. Okay, but glory to God, we marched yesterday. My legs and all were hurting. It was just a, it was just like a workout. But it was great because Pastor Ray and I have been working with this ministry, Sisters for Life, for at least 15 years, and uh, we've been going back and forth doing marches with them every Father's Day weekend. 
we've been doing this for like uh, at least nine or ten of, of the years, of the 15 years. And yesterday, it was just so powerful because uh, Pastor uh, Angela Minter, the sister that got the vision, that it had several abortions, and then God talked to her and said, hey, this is what needs to happen. And then she started standing up for the aborted babies. Exactly. And they have saved, I think she said, over 1,025 babies' <laughs> lives. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And I'm thinking to myself, glory to God. She was actually, I said, she is basically a superwoman. I mean, I mean, she's going in and believing God and talking to these young women. And now she doesn't, that ministry doesn't stop there. They also minister to the families. And whatever they have need of, help them get jobs and education and all kind of things. Because you can't wow. just believe God for one thing and have stop to. it. But you have to have a solution <laughs> to help them get <laughs> over the hump. Everybody say amen. 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 So uh, amen. yesterday it was honorable amen. and it was great and powerful yes. because the clinic is closed. Okay, yeah. we've been. She's been believing for 19 years. Oh, now. 19 years. Right. So if you don't think God is hearing you, you need to keep believing. Yeah, you yeah. got to keep trusting, and yeah. that's what spoke to me. This sister, in the midst of everything going wrong, mm. she still believed God. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you to continue yeah. to believe God for whatever it is, and you will see the salvation of God. In the land of the living. Everybody say amen. amen. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And I just wanted to open us up with the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Because he's our father. Amen. amen. We all have the same heavenly father. Everybody say amen. amen. So we're going to do the Lord's Prayer. And if you say uh, forgive us our debts. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sin. Y'all know. Say what you say. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's all stand and say the Lord's Prayer. Because he is our heavenly father. Yeah, yeah, and I don't yeah. know what your earthly father was like. I praise God for my husband who was an a, a awesome example of an earthly father that has done great things. Pastor Chris, uh, Bishop, I, I, Brother Terry, I've seen great fathers. That's amen. But none, none of them yeah. compared to our heavenly father. Okay. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Yeah. So let's give God all the glory today. Because he is our heavenly father. Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Our father, our father, which are in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we say happy heavenly you know, Father day to our heavenly Father. And we give him glory. And may you be blessed throughout the day. Bless folk that have been a blessing. Bless the fathers today. Amen. Say amen. 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 Welcome. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. And welcome, and welcome, and welcome, and happy Sunday to Happy everybody. Sunday! Welcome to be here. Since the, and since the Spirit of the Lord actually has already given us our scripture for this morning, <laughs> the very same one that I was going to pray to, uh, let me bring, bring the rest of it. He says, But be thou therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of amen. before you ask him, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I want to, I just want to, your lead that's with us today. Our Father, which is in heaven, knows exactly where we're at. Mm. Right. He knows exactly where we're at. He knows what we're going through. He knows what our situation is right now. Mm -hmm. You say, well, 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 well Pastor, now listen, I'm going through hell. Well, guess what? He's been there before. He's with you. Amen. He's with you there, okay? Amen. And he has got control over hell also. <laughs> yes. And so nothing, there's no place that we can't be that our Father is not. Amen. What's Amen. we thank you, Lord, for it. I'm not going to uh, uh, belay the thought. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Kingdom Life Ministries International here in Elizabethtown by the partnership of Dr. Reynard Romero mm. and in our first lady, Sister Jovillian Romero. But I want to thank you all for joining us. And again, mm. your Father knows you. Amen. Amen. He knows you. That's our Father. Right. He Amen. knows you. Me and my daughter got into a knockdown drag out the other day. Yeah. She said some things that came out of her mouth that I could not imagine. I couldn't imagine. I would never hear 
But when she left, I was thinking, boy, does she have enough gas to get to a show where she's going? Does she have everything that she needs, okay? When she came back home, did she stop and eat? Yeah. Okay? Because that's what, that's what fathers do. Right. Regardless of what we do. Well, right regardless of who we are. Yeah, yeah. Our fathers. Our Come fathers. On, our, right. our names are written Come into on, his man. hand, okay? Yeah, yeah, his, yeah. He has hey. written out his name hey. into his hey. hands. He yes. can't forget us, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So regardless of what's happening to us, yeah. Our Father, yeah, come on, which are in heaven, Amen. hallowed be your name. Amen. He's worthy of benefit. So bless him, bless Jesus. him. And remember, regardless of where we're at, he's in heaven. All he's right. our Father. Right. And he All loves right. us. So he knows where we're at. Amen. He loves us with everything that he has. Wow. Amen. 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 Welcome, Amen. welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I'm excited to have with us today uh, Pastor Chris, who has um, been uh, one of my spiritual sons for yes. hey, 20, 25 years, I guess. We've been yeah. hanging out together. Amen. Yes, He's actually when we pastored our first church in Louisville, Kentucky, the Lord's Chapel. He was actually uh, my right hand man. Amen. And, and to this day, uh, Probably, there's probably not a, if I, if I run into um, a situation where I cannot remember a scripture, all I got to do is say, uh, Pastor Chris. Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, where is this? And boom, there it is. I'm like, well, glory to God. Amen. So it's always good to be, surround yourself uh, with great men. Amen. Yes. Surround yourself with great men. Surround yourself with great leaders. Surround yourself with men of God that are going to challenge you. Amen. Yes. Uh, very seldom do you see me hanging around with people that, that will not challenge me. Everybody that I'm around, they, they're doing something bigger. They're doing something better. They're doing something greater. Yes. And it, it always puts a challenge to me. Uh, to step up my game, Amen. Amen. And uh, and I'm not saying that you don't, you're not around those people, but the people that you're around that you mentor are not the same people that you're around that are there to mentor you. So you got to be around those people, Amen. Amen. And Amen. this young man uh, is one of them, yes. Amen. He's yes. one of them. He challenges me all the time. Every time we talk, it's not just a simple conversation, no. Amen. Uh, he, 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 he puts me to the test, yes, and, he, sir. and he brings some stuff out, and I'm like, okay, well, you know what? Uh, I'm going to sit back and think about that for a little okay. bit, Amen. So praise God, excellent, Amen. Excellent. So if y'all would put your hands together, <laughs> Amen. her words and my words we agreed on that and this is what came out of her mouth she said you know I know we have a really good marriage because we might literally only have it. I'm gonna tell you now, Dr. Romero and his wife and the family they know my wife <laughs> she's very direct yeah. she's very blunt yeah she has no filter uh, so when I'm telling you this just understand it's a real thing. Yeah. She says, because, um, you know, we might only have two or three spats a year, uh, if that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they last maybe a few minutes, and then after that, oh, what are we going to get to eat? Amen. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Amen. Yeah, we're going to eat. Yeah, let's, let's go. So it's uh, one of those things. Good. All right. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the Father and you. All right mm -hmm. now. It's one of my favorite subjects. Amen, Pastor. It encompasses our whole life. Yes. Well, let me say this to you. There is, um, as Pastor told me what he had been teaching for a while, and it's about purpose, uh, process, and function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But let me reverse that for a minute. Function, process, and purpose. All right. And I want you to tag on purpose, Elohim. Say that with me. Say Elohim. Elohim. Okay. Say Elohim. Elohim. Purpose. Purpose. Okay, good. So function, process, and purpose. Now, why do I say that in that way? Why do I reverse it? Because commonly how we look at things is we look at how we function. We look at our actions that we take. And if you look at the actions that you take, if you look at the function of something, as if this water, I know this water, this water, this bottle here, the bottle's function is made to hold the water. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I know the bottle is made to hold the water? Because I can see it is functioning in its purpose right, right. now. Right. The bottle is doing what it's supposed to do. That's right. It's functioning. Yes. Now, it's not running a marathon. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not in the Indy 500 trying to win the first place. Right. Zoom. It just literally sits on a shelf. Yeah. Sits with the other group of water bottles, uh -huh. doesn't do anything, but it is fulfilling its purpose. Right, right. right. It is functioning while it's sitting there. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to imagine for a moment that if the water bottle looked over at the fork, mm -hmm. we're on the dinner table. The water bottle said, "I tell you what, that fork just gets to go everywhere." Mm -hmm. It goes in the drawer. It goes in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. It goes all around people's hands gets to see the inside of people's mouth, and it gets to go and see the most finest delicacy of food. And when people get, rid get done with me, they just throw me in the trash. Mm -hmm. Now, the water bottle could be pretty uptight over that well. because, wow, if I could just be the fork. Mm -hmm. And so the water bottle begins to say, well, let me try to function like the fork. Can you imagine sitting at a dinner table? Because today we're going to go out and eat somewhere. Or maybe you're going to have a meal or something. Somebody's going to eat. At least I'm going to eat. I'm going to talk to myself. I'm going to eat today. I'm going to tell you that right now. But I can tell you when I do go to eat, I'm not going to sit at the table and I'm going to take my water bottle and just start trying to dig into some food. Right, right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. My six-year-old granddaughter, Aubrey, Come on. would look at me and say, Papa, what are you doing? That's not... Why are you using the water bottle to eat with? Uh, you didn't yeah. use your fork. Right. Now, Aubrey's got a bit of my wife in her. <laughs> She's very direct. She's very blunt. Mm -hmm. She has no filter. And mm -hmm. she would just tell you. <laughs> All right. So, golly, I could tell some stories about this thing. Well, let me just tell you a quick story. So, my wife was in the store, and she pulled out her license. She was paying for something with the car. She pulled out her license to pay, and they had to get her ID. And Aubrey was standing there. Aubrey got to looking at her license, looked at my wife, looked at her license, looked back at her, and said, Mimi, I didn't know you was white. <laughs> so five years old, I'm thinking, wow, like, <laughs> wasn't even a registered thing for her, but she just like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Now the other ones, they might have waited till they got to the car. Like, mm -mm, not Aubrey. Aubrey, right out there in front of the cashier, people in line. It's coming out. Okay. So bottom line, the water bottle cannot function like a fork. Now, mm -hmm. the fork may be saying, "Gosh, I tell you what, that old stinking water bottle." You realize every time somebody takes a drink, they just say, ah, that was so refreshing. Oh, that was so good. And look, there are more of them than there are of us. God. They're in stores. Mm -hmm. They're in gas stations. And return. You see the old water bottle. And here we are stuck in a drawer where nobody can see us. Mm -hmm. They only get us out when they want to use us. And once they get done using us, they put us back. While this water bottle gets to parade around and everybody gets to see them. I tell you what. You know what? I'm going to go try to act like this. I'm going to be the water bottle. I'm going to be the next best thing. And I'm going to make that water bottle look bad. I'm going to put that water bottle in shame. Wow. So now I am going to go do what that water bottle does. The fork goes over and attempts to capture the water and function like the water bottle, the problem is the water keeps going through it. Right. Oh, the fork can't hold the water. Right. And now you have a person who is really thirsty. Can you imagine this? 
I'm super thirsty. It's 100 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. I've been out working in the heat for at least three hours, and I go to get a drink, and somebody hands me a fork and says, with a bowl of water, say, here you go. Just get some water at this fork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? This is not working. Right. I'm going to be like my dog and put my head underneath the faucet or something or a spigot and get some water. Right. Because the water bottle sitting here is functioning in its purpose. If it attempts to go and act like a fork and get a lot of movement, it will begin to deny and walk out of its purpose. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's See, right. in its function already is built in a process. Mm -hmm. See, when they made the, let me tell you something. When they made this water bottle, this water bottle, sometimes they put prices on them for a few recycling or not, but this water bottle, oh, I don't know, didn't take much to, to make at all. Mm -hmm. How much, how much, I think, what about? Five, ten cents. Five, ten cents? Right. But yet, because of its functionality and what its purpose is and what it's made to do, mm -hmm. they don't sell it at that. Right. Exactly. You'll pay a dollar, two dollars, mm -hmm. depending upon what kind of bottle it is, you might pay five. Right. For one bottle of water. Mm. So what are you paying for? It's functioning in its purpose, mm -hmm. and because it has something in it and it's doing something, you're paying for what its purpose is. Mm -hmm. The value is in its purpose. Did you catch that? All right. Yeah. All right. So, All right. just like the fork, okay, the fork has a purpose. The fork is not going to function like a water bottle, but yet I have to move the fork. I have to do something with the fork. The fork is active. So understand that within the function of the water bottle mm -hmm. is a process of what it's going to be used for right. that tells you what its purpose is. Mm -hmm. Now, I wrote down a definition here Come on. about purpose. I want to read it to you. Okay. Purpose. This is from a etymology dictionary. Okay. If you want to know what an etymology dictionary is, that is the type of dictionary that tells you the origin of that word mm -hmm. and how it was originally used. Okay. Okay, I'm a word nerd like that, so I like I don't like to look at the definition. I want to know what's its original purpose. What was it used for? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Purpose, 1300s. Purpose. It means intention, aim, and goal. Okay. Mm. Its object to be kept in view. Mm. Proper function. For which something exists. Mm. Let's say that again. Amen. The proper function for which something exists. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Now watch this. I'm going to read to you Genesis chapter 1. This is good. Verse 26. We'll start there. And we are going to discuss, again, the Father in you. So let me tell you about Father real quick, okay? So Father encompasses what that means. It means source. All right. It means foundation. It means beginning. Mm -hmm. The father, not to be graphic, mm -hmm. holds the seed. Mm -hmm. The seed that reproduces. Mm -hmm. Right. The seed has to be planted and incubated to reproduce. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Everything in creation reproduces after its own kind. Right. Remember purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is our definition? It is proper function for which something exists. Yeah. Get that. Your purpose will produce automatically a proper function. It's a process. And you will know why you exist. Well, okay. How do I know that this is not a fork because of its function? What it does. All right. it, I know what its purpose is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The purpose is built into the name of it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So a name, and it says in... Proverbs, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Right. Now, some of this we don't get in our westernized community in America about a name, but in Hebrew culture, a name embodied the DNA of that. Amen. It embodied the purpose. It embodied everything about it Amen. within its name. So you cannot separate the purpose from the name, and you can't separate the name from the purpose. Yes. The nature of something is in the name, and the name of something is in its nature. You cannot separate them. They are one. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So when you say the nature of something, you also have to know the name of that thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of teaching you how to read your Bible. Yeah, right. Right. We're not just labeling something. Oh, this is what. No, 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 no. It's got a purpose. It's got a function. Everything is built within it. Everything by how it will how it will function in its process is built within it. This iPhone is built with a process in it. Mm -hmm. It does not ask me how to function. It's already got it inside of it. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is follow the prompts according to instructions, and it will respond accordingly. Right. Okay. So, purpose, proper function for which something exists. <laughs> Watch this. Genesis 126. Mm -hmm. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image after our likeness, and let them, let them, them. have dominion over the fish of the sea, yeah. over the birds of the heavens, mm -hmm. over the livestock, mm -hmm. over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. <laughs> so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, I always wondered about that part in verse 27. Anybody ever wonder about that? It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. In King James, it says, he him. Mm. He him, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it says, right? Yes. yes. He him. So I looked that he him up part. When you look that up, that he him, it literally says, there is no translation in our English language for this. Mm. I said, what? Mm. Then it gave what it should be. It means a manifestation. Mm. It means to appear. Mm. It means evidence. It means sign. Mm. It means prodigy. Mm. And so when you read it, it should read, so God created mankind in their own image. In the image of God, he created evidence. Mm. Oh. Evidence. Created a sign. Mm. A token of his own nature within mankind. All right, mm. man. So the same thing about God is inherently now in a physical body. Mm -hmm. right. See, this water is no less water because it's in a bottle. Mm -hmm. right. Right. It right. came out of a faucet or it came out of somewhere. And I will say for the company that I work for, mm -hmm. if you walk in with a bottle of water, everybody's turning their heads. Mm. What you doing with a bottle of water? Uh -huh. I work for the water company. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you go into the office and you have a bottle of water, our um, one of the VPs will come out. Um, she'll come out and say, uh, "What are we doing here? What's this? Yeah. What are you doing with this bottle of water? Yeah. <laughs> they have cups where you can get water, tap water from. <laughs> oh, their product. Some humor. Some humor. All right. So purpose. Proper function for which something exists. Yes. So the original purpose, your purpose, mm -hmm. you, humanity, male, female, your purpose. You were made after the image and likeness of God. Now let me just make this simple because I know I'll say a lot of things. You may not contain all those things, but I'm going to say this one thing that you will contain. This is real simple. Everything that could be known about you is in Jesus, and everything about Jesus is what is known about you. Mm -hmm. Wow. If it can be said about Jesus, it can be said about you. Right. Okay. Come on, man. Oh, wow. Come on. Okay. It's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So you have the first Adam. Yeah. All humanity was in. I could talk to anybody in any church, and nobody would disagree with me that, yes, all humanity was in Adam. All humanity, and this happened over here, and then when Adam fell, all fell. You know why that is? Because it's a species. Mm. Let me help you with something else. Mm -hmm. Technically, Adam is not man's name. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's there in your Bible, right there, and it was there when you bought it. <laughs> it's right there. I can promise you this. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the name. Okay. Just like this. Just like you have uh, an eagle. An eagle is a bird. It's in the bird family. Yeah. A lion is in the what family? Mm -hmm. Talk to me now. Cat, cat, family. cat family. It's a big cat. That's right. But it's a cat. Mm -hmm. you, you ever look at their nature? Guess what? 
Yeah, they're feline. Thank you. They lick themselves. They do all the stuff. And guess what? Their tongues are very rough. Mm -hmm. Just like a cat. Mm -hmm. House cat that I've had. Because I'm not bringing one of them home. <laughs> so, here's the point. This was a species. Yeah. Then Jesus comes along. And you know what they call Jesus? Mm -hmm. The last Adam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus is called the last Adam. Mm -hmm. This is mean there's going to be no other after me. This is it. And comes to redeem mankind. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to redeem? Mm -hmm. To put back to its original order. Amen. Yes. 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 Okay. What does salvation mean? I'm, I'm, hold on for a minute. <laughs> salvation in scripture was not, was not. The Spirit's Father over here knows me well enough to know. Mm -hmm. If I say something, believe me. That's right. I've done enough deep dive research on this stuff. Yeah. I take my job very seriously. Come on, man. Okay. And I believe everybody else should too. Mm -hmm. Some people just don't. Yep. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Salvation was not an afterlife concept. Mm. Come on, man. That's right. right. I'll say that right. again. Salvation was not an afterlife concept. Let, let, let me just tell you where right. it comes from. Right. Genesis 49, verse 18. Very good. Mm -hmm. You go there. Mm -hmm. yes. Genesis. Mm -hmm. Let me self-check myself. Mm -hmm. Ah, of course it is. I wait for your salvation, O Lord. In King James, it may read it a bit differently. But the word that we're looking at is salvation. Mm -hmm. When you look that word up in the ancient Hebrew context, here's what this means. It is the idea of a shepherd. Okay? That, you want me to read that to you? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read, I'm gonna read the definition. Exactly where I got it. Genesis 49 and what, please? Genesis 49, verse 18. So one of the things you have to understand about ancient Hebrew language they actually had actual concrete evidence for their language. In other words, when they said it, they had something they linked it back to okay. in their own experience. Mm -hmm. See, in Hebrew, in order for you to experience something, it's not like you go down to the assembly line and, you know, like somebody put this podium together. You put it together, you may know all the moving parts of it, but if you don't ever use it, you didn't experience it. That chair you're sitting on, somebody put it together. And the person that put it together, if they never sat on it, according to scripture, and in Hebrew thought, because this is where it's derived from, you didn't experience it. Mm -hmm. See, you may know everything about the chair. You can tell me what parts I need for it if something breaks on it. You can tell me where the cushions came from. You can tell me what it's made of. You can tell me what size this screw is. But if you never sit in it, you did not experience it. <laughs> okay. Salvation. Let's go here. It's a Hebrew word, uh, 3444. Four, four. That's the number. And in ancient Hebrew, it's two words. It's shepherd and delight. It's a picture of teeth used for devouring or destruction. Hmm. Didn't expect that because I didn't when I read it. I said, what? And it is also another picture of an eye. Combine these mean destroyer watches. Wow. Watches. And here's what it means. The shepherd carefully watches over the flock in the surrounding area, always on the lookout for danger. And when a predator comes to attack, the shepherd destroys the enemy. Come on now. That yep. is what salvation is built off of. Come on now. That yeah. definition right there yeah. is the understanding that they had about yeah. salvation. Yeah. Wow. So salvation was never in their minds an afterlife concept. We made that. Mm -hmm. And that was because, okay, since we want to talk about not adding anything to scripture, let me just help you. That was because of pagan ideas yeah. that were imported mm -hmm. into Jewish thought mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and was not originally there. That's where we get it from. Come on now. Sounds a little bit like uh, Greek mythology, 
yeah. Zeus and all of those other guys. Yeah. All right, let me keep reading. Let me keep going. Okay. So your purpose is to relate to Jesus. Let me tell you something that Jesus did. Well, let me tell you this back and back. So if you're going to be effective in your purpose, Philemon 1.6 says this. Your faith is effective by acknowledging every good thing that is within you. Mm. Come on. See, if I take 30 minutes and I preach to you who you're not, and I tell you about your dirty sin, your heart that's desperately wicked, and all of this stuff... But then I take at the end five minutes. Okay, just pray this prayer and everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> that, that, that's, that's good news? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Yes, I'm going to boldly come down the road on this. Mm -hmm. Because that is not good news. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's never been good news. Mm -hmm. The good news is telling you and remind. Let, let me say this. Watch this. Watch this now. Jesus told his disciples to go and proclaim the gospel. Mm. Proclaim. The gospel is a proclamation, not an invitation. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come yeah. on. Come on. It's good news. In scripture. Yeah. Amen. Same Bible. Proclaim. In there when you bought it. Amen. <laughs> right there. Come on. The gospel is a proclamation, not an invitation. Yes. Mm -hmm. The salvation part, that part, since it's not an afterlife concept, though you do get to live after with it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't start there. Okay? Mm. It's a now concept. Come on. Mm. What good does it do? Let me tell you something. Let me ask you something. What good does it do for you to get healing, restoration, and everything when you're dead? Come on. Well, if I'm, you're not here, I'm just saying. Uh, why, why in the world are you going to talk about all this money and prosperity and just it'll be, it'll be greater on the by and by over here? Mm. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Now. Then that means I'm just going to be careful and wait it out till I get to my deathbed and I'll go ahead and say that prayer you're talking about. Mm -hmm. wow. I'm just being real. These are facts. Yeah. It's real. Yes. If you don't know what's out there, when you go out there and minister to people, take that if you want to, yeah. and you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. Right, mm -hmm. right. But I am telling you, the proclamation of the gospel mm -hmm. sets people free 100%. All right, now. Right. Right. You know how many, listen, how many people have I had turned me down from listening to the message of the gospel? Mm. Zero. Mm. These ain't church folk. These are people that ain't ever laid eyes on the Bible. Mm. These are people that don't want nothing to do with church folk. Mm -hmm. Oh, they'll listen to me. I have no problem with that. Mm. Kind of looks like what happened with Jesus. I'm, I'm wondering why I never saw the Pharisees were friends of sinners. I just can't find it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Never found it. Religious. But you do see Jesus was. Right. Why? It might be because Jesus actually came and revealed the Father. Mm. Revealed your true nature. Revealed the true nature of humanity that had been suppressed by sin. Do you want to know what sin is? I'm going to tell you what sin is. It means to miss the mark or miss identity. Jesus did not come to change God's mind about humanity. Jesus came to change humanity's mind about God. All right, man. Okay. Praise God. Period. You know what repentance is? <laughs> repentance is you changing your mind about God to align with what Jesus revealed about God. Amen. Right. For some, I don't know where people get this. God is love, but God is just. When I hear that mess, I know they have not read, the, they have not studied anything. Mm. They have parroted what they've been taught. Because when you read about judgment and the judgment that Jesus brings, first Jesus says, all judgment has been handed over to the Son. Yes. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Let me go there. Yep. Mm -hmm. John. Ah, here it is. Yes, yes, yes. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Before this purpose, I've come to this hour. Okay, let me help you with something. Let me change some things. John 
John 12, verse 27. Thank you. Thank you. John 12, verse 27. First of all, you need to understand this about God and the Father, the Father and Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something that may rivet you again, but it is true. Okay? The Father was not, did not set out with the agenda. Well, let me just go have my son murdered. Oh, sounds different when I say it like that, huh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds different when I say it like that. But that's what we've been taught. That's what tradition has taught. Just because he gave his son to the world, didn't say I'm going to give my son to the world. No. Jesus said, I'm going up. No one takes my life from me. I lay it down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's given himself into the hands of those Pharisees and Gentiles. Everybody was included alike. Yes. Right. Mankind. It was mankind's violence upon God. Right. And what happens when violence, darkness, oh my God, you better hear this. Jesus said, light shines in darkness, and the darkness is not overcome it. Mm -hmm. right. Darkness came in upon light. And light said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. Come on. This is light. Yes. Light consumed the darkness, resurrected and won over it. Yes. See, here's the thing. It's like if my granddaughter somehow makes her way in a field somewhere and in between me and her is a bramble of thorns and thorn bushes and there is no other way for me to get to her, but to go through them. Come on. What I know is this. I'm going to incur some cuts, wow. lacerations, and everything just to get to her. Amen. And I'm going to incur more because I'm going to be protecting her on my way out so nothing gets her and it gets me. Amen. Glory. Now, in that example, it's not that. God was like, yep, yeah, I got to stick him. I got to cut him. Mm -hmm. No. It was a necessary thing in war. It's something that happens. What do they call those casualties of war? Yes. Yeah. It's not that you set out to want to lose life. Right. You just understand in the process of this, there might be some life taken. Right. Somebody might lose their life. Somebody might get hurt because of the undertaking of what's going to happen. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Yes. So your purpose, get this is wrapped up in Jesus. And Jesus is wrapped up in your purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. A few little things. I'm almost done. All right. Let me say this to you. So you actually determine this. All right. You cannot manage your source. Your source manages you. Mm. <laughs> well. You cannot manage your obsession. Your obsessions that manage you. Mm. You cannot manage that which you make your priority. Your priority manages you. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. Remember what I said earlier. You cannot manage your Elohim. Mm -hmm. You can only serve mm -hmm. Elohim. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. What does this mean? This means that, for those of you who do not know what Elohim means, it means authority and power. Mm -hmm. So whatever you have made your purpose... Whatever you have made your priority, that is your authority, and that is the power by which you function from, and that is what you produce. Mm. Yes. You will automatically reproduce this. So what do you do? Well, one, I find that the most difficult thing in getting believers to believe mm -hmm. is the goodness of God. Mm. Yeah, that, to believe that God actually is this good. Mm. To believe that God actually is this kind. Yes. To believe that God actually is this loving. Mm. Let, let, me, let me just tell you a few things about yourself that are true about Jesus that are also true about you. Mm -hmm. Do you know that your natural inherent nature is be pure of heart? Mm. Come on now. Glory to God. I just gave the mm. victory 
for any kind of sexual immorality, mm. fornication, por pornography, you mm. name it, doesn't matter. Come on. I'm telling you the will it to happen doesn't work. Mm. Right. But right. what does That's happen right. and what does work and actually is sustained is when you can actually repent, change how you see yourself, right. to see yourself how God sees you. Wow. Do you realize, let me tell you to say this, any other God that you see you. and follow other than that one that Jesus revealed is idolatry. Yeah. Right. Right. Even if it looks holy. Yeah. Wow. If the God you see is a God of wrath and destruction, and I'm going to sort it out later, and it looks nothing like Jesus, it's idolatry, Amen. period. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of it in our churches. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. sure is. Yes, sir. So, seeing yourself anything other and less than what God revealed is pride. Mm -hmm. When you see yourself and accept what God says about you, that is humility. Yes. All right, let me finish. I promise you. Almost done. You're doing good. Thank you. Amen. Okay. So, this last, I'm going to read this last thing. Okay. Because if you get this, it will produce your process and you will begin to function mm -hmm. because of you functioning from your original purpose. Do you know that you are made to be loving? Amen. Amen. You're made to be kind? Let, let me say this again so you get it, because I don't know if you're really hearing me. I didn't say you do stuff to be kind. No, you already are kind. Right. It is in you right now. Hallelujah. Now, it may be suppressed under a bunch of lies that say I am not. Hallelujah. And my Hallelujah. question to you is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to change how you think and see yourself the way that God sees you? Or are you going to continue to believe the same lies? Mm. Well, i got to yeah. keep doing this. You know i got to do this and i got to do that. You know i got to do all these confessions of prayer. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with any of that. Do those things. But the problem is, many times we do those things to become something rather than do those things because we are something. Awesome. All yeah. right, man. Glory. There's a huge yeah. difference. Good work, good work. Do it because you are, not because you're trying to oh, become. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that trying to become is what got the first man and woman in trouble? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. If I eat of this tree, <laughs> the external reference point, I will be something, yeah. Yeah. but they already were it. Yes. Right. Yep. Okay. The law, the covenant, which is where they got, Israel got their purpose from. Okay, it says that they could not look at the face of Moses because of the glory on his face. But I want somebody to pick something. Matthew, Mark, or Luke? Just pick. Anybody? Mark. Luke? Okay, we'll go with Luke. We'll go with Luke. I got to pick a verse today. Okay, Luke chapter 9, verse 28. Watch this. Now about Luke chapter 9, verse 28. Now about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. Mm -hmm. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, yeah. which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory. What? Hold up. <laughs> Let me read that again, make sure I got the... What are you talking about? Let me... Uh... Okay. For many people... Let me just let me go to the King James. Okay, let me do that. Let me read it. Maybe, maybe I got that one. Okay, here we go. <laughs> but Peter, verse 32, and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw. He's in there too. Okay, let's try the NIV. <laughs> I must be missing something. NIV. Mm. Okay, here we go. Verse 32, we're going to try it again. Here we go. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw. Well, I am. Everybody saw that. Still there. I bet you if we go into Greek and Hebrew, I guess I, I, I would bet anything we're going to see they saw. Okay, let me keep reading. Let me finish for it. They saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as they were parting from him, Peter said to him, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. He 
was that beside himself. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. Do you know why they were afraid because of that cloud? Because if you read your history in the Old Testament, that cloud right there was said at one point, if anybody comes close and to the cloud, they will be killed. Yes. Yes. They were afraid this was the same cloud. <laughs> That's why they were afraid and terrified, because as a Jew, they understood this. They were like, oh, no, nah, we get ready to die. This cloud, oh, well, we had to pick this day to go up on the mountain to be the ones. How come we couldn't be like the other nine and stay back? We had to be the ones in the front of the class speaking up, and Jesus told us, hey, Peter, James, and John, you're going with me. Wow. So, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son. That's another thing you need to notice. It said that if anyone breaks through, out of the cloud is going to come an arrow to shoot and kill. <laughs> I'm serious. It's written. You look at all this stuff coming out of this cloud. I'm like, what in the world? God did a lot of stuff in that cloud. It's pretty funny. You kind of read through it. Anyways, the voice came out saying, this is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Two things happened. They saw glory, the face of Jesus shining, and they did not have to hide their face. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to hide their face. They saw it. It's like, what? Whereas under the law, they couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. But here with Jesus, they could see it. What does this mean? There is nothing mysterious that God is hiding from you. Get rid of this language about God working in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. It's not biblical and it's not Christ-like. <laughs> it's not. I'm just going to, it's not, it's never been. We thought it was because we didn't know any better. Right. But then later on we says, found out, no, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Renew your mind that you may prove and judge what the will of, do you know that? Yeah. You are supposed to be looking at situations and determining what God's will is. Yeah. You're to be able to, t no, that ain't God's will. That's just part of your responsibility. Everybody in this room. It's not just pastors. No, you are sons and daughters of the Most High God. You have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you. You are at nature pure in heart. You are at nature kind. You are at nature loving. You are at nature at peace. You are at nature giving. That is your nature. Amen. Your genuine nature from your Father. Okay, so I am actually done. The Father and you. What did you get out of this? If you didn't get anything out of this, I would tell you this. is If you look at Jesus and Jesus' life, look at yourself. You're looking at a mirror. Don't look at Peter. Don't say I'm the woman that was in the issue of blood crawling. Don't say you're the lame man by the pool. Don't even say you're the Apostle Paul. Yes. No. Your mirror is Jesus. I will say that Paul said something that I don't know many preachers say. He said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Yeah. Where are you at? What did Paul get right? Imitating the nature of Jesus. That's Amen. what you can get right all the time. Amen. It's not about your acts. Your acts you may mess up on. But in your acts when you mess up, like I've done, okay? I did it this morning. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. So this morning when I left, you know, when my wife has her days off, I like to give her her days off. So on her days off, you know, especially in the morning, even if she wakes up, I won't say too much to her. Why? I'm trying to get her to say the same thing, say, say the first words, okay? Work days is different. Off days, it's a whole different day. Now, she was fine. She's like, oh, you'd have to do that. But even still, in the way I responded, I said, you know what? I apologize for not saying anything. And she said, oh, you're good? I said, well, and this is why? She said, oh, I understand. Why? What did I do? Even though the action wasn't offensive, the way that I did everything was still in a Christ-like manner. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. The nature of God never changes. Mm -hmm. You can be perfect at that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, what I got is that I'm not trying to be. I already am. Yes, Amen. Yes, Glory to God. I'm not striving to be something. 
I already am. Glory to God. And I love this, the, the, the analogy. Is he went back to, to Adam and he spoke about Adam. And every living thing came out of Adam. Every living thing came out of Adam. Woman came out of Adam. Amen. So what does that mean? That means that everything that you have need of is already on the inside of you. Y'all yeah, 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 yeah. so, so the Lord looked around and he said there was not a suitable partner for Adam. Okay? It was not a suitable partner for Adam. So what he did was that he took Eve out of Adam. Adam had a need. It was already on him. God did not go and recreate a female for Adam. God took Eve out of Adam. Therefore, he is now complete. Amen. What is it? The analogy, the analogy is that everything that you have need of is already on the inside of you. Everything. Everything. No matter what it is. It's already on the inside of you. Which means what? Which means I'm mirroring Jesus. Amen. Now that's a work. It's a work. I'll give you that. We work on this thing every day. But glory to God. Amen. Every day. We should be a little bit closer than I was yesterday. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we bless you. We love you. We glorify and we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for celebrating you, the Father of all, the Father of lights, the Father of life, the giver of life. We celebrate you. We thank you. We bless you. We worship you today in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 We thank y'all for joining in with us today here at Kingdom Life Ministries International. We hope that you enjoyed the message today from Pastor Chris Harris. If you need to hear it again, uh, it is archived and you can go back and get it and listen to it through two or three more times until you get the full understanding of uh, his analogy of how we are in Christ and Christ in us. Amen. Amen. So bless you, love you, and I'm here at Kingdom Life Ministries.